from my experience, if you want to sell something, you have to be talking to the right buyer, the right person that wants what you uh, uh, have and needs what you have and has the ability to purchase what you have. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my business when I started. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know me, George Palio, we run a life insurance agency. And when I first got started, I was looking for clients and I was talking to a lot of younger people because I was younger. I was looking for business partners and I was recruiting a lot of younger people. And it's they're easier to get excited, easier to get fired up, but they, they're not mentally tough. There's a, a lot of distractions. And every once in a while, you find yourself a, a young, absolute stud, but it's it's rare, right? Typically, people got to be beat up. They got to mature. They got to learn. They got to get exposed to different jobs and businesses. They have to be frustrated. They have to be encountered with you know, that there's a real cost to life. You know, they want to buy a house. They want to get married. They want to travel the world. They need multiple cars. They're raising kids. Like when somebody really is in that moment of their life, their expenses are the highest that they're, they've ever been. And so that person is being faced with a reality. I have all these goals and dreams, but I have a limited income. How do I accomplish my goals and my dreams? And what ends up happening is we have to space out those goals and dreams because we can't do them all at one time and we have to space them out as we can afford them. So, hey, you know, we'll travel to Europe eventually, right? Versus, hey, let's go there this summer. Well, we don't have the money to do that, right? So we we'll eventually, let's save up, let's put it on a credit card and so forth. And so those people are faced with that reality. Man, we want our kids to go to this private school. It's an extra thousand, two thousand dollars per month per kid. Man, we want our kids to be able to get private practice lessons, you know, for whatever they're doing. Uh, but man, that's gonna cost extra money. Man, you know, we want to buy this house, but that, that down payment's, you know, 20% on a million dollars, that's $200,000 or 20% or on 600000 that's $120,000. Like we really need to save more money. We really need to make more money. And so I started realizing that I was talking to the wrong people. I was talking to people that were younger, that necessarily didn't have big financial goals. They were trying to figure out their career still. They were trying to figure out themselves. And I wanted to get into the right market. And so we have something in our business, we call it a top 25 list. And it's, you know, there's eight pointers on this list. And so the, the you know, when you get started in the business, you're putting down people you want to talk to about what you're doing. And uh, the eight pointers are over 25, married kids, own a home and have an income. And those five points, those five points help classify or qualify if that person's a good potential client. And then the other three points, which make up the eight, is ambitious, dissatisfied, and business-minded. Because if somebody's ambitious and they're business-minded, that's great, but maybe they own a business, maybe they're already happy with what they're doing. That dissatisfaction qualifies them as, hey, this is a good candidate for entrepreneurship for the agency. And so when they have all eight of those, they're not only a good candidate for a client, but they're also a good candidate for the business. And if a person gets started in the business and they have that criteria, they typically associate with other with other people that they share that uh, common information. So if I'm married, I'm probably hanging out with married people. If I have kids, I'm probably hanging out with people that have children, right? If I'm, I'm in a position financially through my life and my career where I own a home, I probably have other friends that I'm around that are plus or minus around where I'm at and are also potential homeowners. So when I started getting clear on the right market, that there are people that actually want what I have, right? Whereas before I'm putting a lot of time and energy to try to convince the wrong market. Hey, you should save money. Hey, you should want to make more money. And, and I'm working so much harder by talking to the wrong person. And I think a lot of people in my industry do that. I think overall, a lot of salespeople do that where they're talking to the wrong person. They haven't uh, identified their ideal candidate for what they're offering. And so uh, we call it, you know, the right market, right? The right market is somebody that has uh, a need for what you want, uh, uh, you're selling, but also want it and have the ability to purchase it. Whether that's the opportunity to get licensed, get trained, become an agent, or whether that's becoming a client. Uh, my first month being in the right market, I made more money than I've ever made in any other month, uh, probably multiple months. Um, and it changed my, it changed my understanding of the business. It changed my perception of the business. And this gentleman told me this a long time ago. He said, if you stay in the wrong market long enough, it affects your belief. And I didn't understand what he meant by when he said that. But after being in the wrong market for my first couple of years in the business and almost quitting and struggling and not making a lot of money, um, in that once I got into the right market, I made in that month what I made almost my entire first year in the business. Think about that. And I was doing less work 
the people were more appreciative of it. Uh, they valued the information more because they were actually looking for it. The business was easier. We made a lot more money. And so my challenge to all of you guys is identify the market that you want to be in. Uh, make a list. And this applies to anything. Right now we're talking about it from a sales perspective. But when I before I found my wife, I made a list of what I wanted in a wife. Right. Uh, you make a list uh, of qualities and characteristics and, you know, behavior and traits and values. And all of a sudden, when you get clearer, right, on what you want, what you want starts to show up in your life. Uh, uh, at this point in my life, I love working with people uh, that are small business owners. I love working with people that are coaches. I love working with people that are athletes. I love working with people that are pastors, people in ministry. I love working with couples, uh, uh, coachable, competitive couples. I love working with couples. Uh, I believe when you have two people that want the same thing in life, they want you know their goals, their dreams to happen, and they're both committed. They each God bless with different uh, uh, traits and personalities and gifts. So they bring a different mix to the table. You, you've heard that you know one horse can pull uh, 75% of its body weight, but two horses can pull 250% of their body weight. That you go from 24 hours in a day to 48 hours in a day. When one person's you know down, the other person's up, and they could pick up the other person. Uh, that they have uh, different strengths that they can connect with other personality types. So like, I'm very clear at this point in my business, I want to work with couples. Uh, they're focused. There's no distractions. A lot of single guys, you know, trying to hook up all the time. There's just, it's just, it's normal, by the way, when you're a single guy, uh, especially if you're not grounded in your faith and you're living in the world today, that's just normal distractions, party, table service. I went through all that stuff. So I don't judge any of them, but that's not necessarily the person I want to do business with today. Now, every once in a while, you'll find an absolute stud who's super mature and ahead. And uh, typically, they, they're, they, they want to do something for their family and they're clear on what kind of life they want to have. But that's not that's not the common uh, denominator, uh, common trend. I'm sorry. And same with young single women, you know, just distractions being pursued all the time. There's different emotional things. You're trying to figure life out. So I'm very clear on the market I want to be in today. I'm looking for people like that. Very clear on people that, hey, uh, I used to think that if you were struggling, right, you needed this. Like, you really need this. And I was trying to convince people to do that. There are a lot of people that today are making $120,000, $150,000 a month that are living, you know, check to check with a little bit in savings, a little bit in 401k um, because, you know, a couple car payments, nice apartment, right, uh, paying off student loans, all of a sudden, $100,000 after taxes isn't as much as it used to be. So get clear on your market. Again, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a business, whether it's a client, what's your ideal client look like, right? Those you know five pointers that we talked about, but identify what you want. Um, and, then, and then for you, maybe it's characteristics too. Uh, I remember I did this list one time and I said, I want... I said, what's my ideal recruit look like? My ideal agent, my ideal leader. What, what, is that, what does that person look like? And number one is I wrote, you know, that they're excited, like they're optimistic. They're, they have a positive attitude, right? And I said, after I wrote this list, I said, I'm going to become this. I'm going to become this list. And I said, I won't read number two until I've mastered number one. And I think I stayed on number one for like an entire year. And my number one was, they're excited, they're grateful, they're optimistic. And I would read that when I got in the shower in the morning and I would be like, man, I'm excited. And I'd be like, dude, no, I'm tired as heck right now. I'm not excited. But then I was like, no, but I'm grateful. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful. And all of a sudden it took my attitude from tired to grateful, from uh, 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 a little bit groggy to man, I'm fired up. I'm excited. Let's get it. Uh, optimistic. So get clear on what you're looking for. And when you do, it'll show up. Take care, everybody. If this you added, if you liked the video, it added value to you. Please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Take care.